Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and you're looking at the evolution of our own sun, and you're going to see that it's going to actually live only about a few billion years, and then kind of, sort of, turn into what's what the game likes to call Nova Remnant, which is actually going to be a white dwarf. Now, today we're going to talk about why red dwarfs, in comparison, live much, much, much longer, and how we can potentially use this in the future to make our sun live longer as well. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So in about 5-ish billion years, our sun is actually going to become a very, very, very large object. It's going to be about this big and it's going to envelop Venus and uh, Mercury and probably even Earth. And then it's going to uh, get rid of its outer shell and become what's known as a white dwarf. Basically, its main sequence um, is going to end with the sun becoming a white dwarf that's going to be approximately 54% of its original mass. Now, even though this takes about 5 billion years to reach, there is actually stars that um, live much, 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 much longer. And for a comparison here, we're actually going to look at uh, a star like, for example, Trappist-1. Now, Trappist-1 is a red dwarf, and we know that red dwarfs can actually live several trillion years. That's like thousand times longer than our sun. Now, why is it that these tiny, tiny stars can live so much longer than our relatively large and relatively massive sun that I'm going to place right here just for a comparison before they collide with each other? Why is it that this, which has a lot more hydrogen, a lot more mass, lives so much less than this. Now, you may have some ideas and you may have some guesses to why this is so, but today I'm going to explain it to you using a bit of a science and basically talk, talk a little bit about the structure of these two stars, because in reality, they're actually kind of different. So first, let's start with our sun. Now, here's the structure of our sun. You can actually see that um, there is quite a lot of things going on. There's a core in the middle, and we might be able to see a kind of a silly representation of that core right here. So basically, I'm just using one of the planets to show you that there is a core right in the middle of the sun. Outside of the core, there is something known as radiative zone, uh, which is not hot enough to start fusion, to basically start burning hydrogen and create helium. And instead, uh, it kind of serves as a dispersion area for uh, both photons and um, some of the hotter parts of the core. Now, generally speaking, the energy inside the core is emitted and absorbed uh, many, many, many times. And a lot of the photons, they basically bounce around inside of the sun before finally coming out to the outside. And um, outside the radiative zone is the so-called convective zone. This is where various um, super, super hot plasma balls essentially uh, float up to the surface and they kind of move in circles and they mix a lot of the material here and then release the heat into space. Now, essentially this is all, for the most part, um, the so-called convective zone. Over time, uh, with billions of years, hydrogen inside the core dissipates and becomes helium. And, and at this point, it can either go into the next cycle known as CNO cycle, or with some stars, it might just actually uh, stop right there, become a white dwarf and basically live out the rest of its life as a dead star. Now let's actually maybe do this a little bit more visual. So here we have the sun core, this is basically a white dwarf, and um, around the core of the sun, we're going to create radiative zone using the rings. And so here is that radiative zone. It doesn't maybe look as realistic as it should, but this is kind of the best I could do. Now, the next part is going to be the uh, next layer, and this is going to be the convective zone. So we're going to add that right above it. Now, on top of that, we're going to be adding the convective zone, which is going to be right here. And on top of the convection zone, uh, there is the chromosphere, uh, which is kind of hard to see here. And then there's the, um, the photosphere and the corona. We're not going to do those because they're not as important for this simulation. But basically, this is kind of the unofficial structure of the sun. So there's the core in the middle. Then there is the um, radiative zone and 
uh, the, uh, the convection zone. And so here, this is actually how things will be a little bit different. So if we actually look at the structure of the um, a typical red dwarf, so for example, Trappist-1, we'll realize that it doesn't actually have one of these zones. A red dwarf would actually not have this yellow radiative zone at all. And because it wouldn't have this radiative zone, it actually creates a different type of a structure with slightly different function. And because of that structure, it actually allows it to live much longer. Now, how does that happen? Well, let's do the same thing, but this time let me show you um, how a red dwarf differs. So once again, so in the sun, inside the core, um, the hydrogen basically radiates a lot of the photons and a lot of other energy and also a lot of hydrogen itself. And as it crosses the radiative zone and goes into the convection zone and then kind of gets stuck here. So in a normal sun-like star, a lot of the hydrogen is actually right here. In a red dwarf, this whole area would be essentially the convection zone. There will be no radiative zone at all. And so the hydrogen that actually gets radiated outside of the core then gets mixed in with helium and so on and gets to actually come back inside the core and reused again. So in other words, the main difference between a red dwarf and a sun-like star, so for example, a G-type star, when they are still in the main sequence phase is that the red dwarf is actually a lot, a lot more efficient at burning hydrogen, which it can then burn for like trillions of years. Whereas our sun, once the hydrogen leaves the core and once it passes through the radiative zone, which we don't actually have here anymore, it uh, gets stuck in the convection zone and can never go back. And at some point, our sun will expand and throw out the entire shell of hydrogen. And what will be left is essentially a white dwarf. And this will happen much, much, much sooner um, than a typical red dwarf. Or actually, red dwarfs don't even expand because they don't need to, since at some point they just kind of run out of hydrogen. Uh, so a typical red dwarf lives like thousands of years longer than a typical sun. So if we go back to the TRAPPIST-1 simulation here, and if we once again place the sun right next to TRAPPIST, um, we can kind of see that even though our sun is a lot more massive and even though our sun looks like it's more efficient because it's brighter, it's more energetic, it actually is using up so much hydrogen um, that is just thrown away, thrown out of the core and ends up inside uh, the convection zone, not the, uh, not the core where it should be. And even though the core of the sun is much hotter, and even though the Trappist core is like only about six to 7,000 degrees and the, the core here is millions of degrees, despite all of this, this is a much more efficient star. So, to answer the question I wanted to basically answer, how do we actually make our sun live longer? And the answer to that is we need to find a way to take the hydrogen from the convective zone and to somehow mix it back into the core. We need to find a mechanism through which we can actually remix the hydrogen back into the core, thus allowing our sun to live trillions of years as well. If we one day can actually harness uh, the energy of the sun and somehow manipulate the sun itself, we might be able to do it. But for now, this is all very theor theoretical and very science fiction-y. Anyway, that's all I wanted to do in this video. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the fireworks that are about to happen as soon as the, these two stars collide. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. And subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who enjoys watching space things and wants to learn through video games. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.